Uh, so we can work with clients on business plans, marketing plans, process improvement, loan packages, and research assistance. Uh, basically, we, we look at ourselves as connectors with the business community. So we work with a lot of resource partners like the Chambers, Main Street organizations, um, any economic development organizations that, that we can, we like to partner with, uh, lenders in the community, anyone that provides services to the business community so that we make sure we connect our business owners with the right resource. Um, right now, there are just two of us in our office. It's myself and Ann Zapp. She's my small business specialist. Uh, she and her husband actually own a, a business, um, Tennessee Moonshine Gourmet Food Products. So they're kind of in the trenches with everybody. So she's a great resource for the food industry and just, you know, what current business environment is experiencing. So I think one thing that's um, high on everybody's mind today is, is the bill that got passed yesterday mm -hmm. and hopefully will be signed today. And so what's the current status of the PPP and the EIDL? And you might explain those terms in case people yeah, don't want to. Yeah, absolutely. So PPP is Paycheck Protection Program. And the EIDL is Economic Injury Disaster Loan. The EIDL, usually called EIDL, is a direct loan. And it ended up turning into a loan advance or a grant program also. But the idol comes directly from SBA. Um, that, that was a somewhat flawed process as it rolled out, as many people know. And um, so the website crashed after the first week, but it came back into a streamlined kind of situation. Um, so that turned into a grant uh, or a loan advance that was based on the number of employees up to 10. Um, and up to is the critical term there. <laughs> uh, a lot of people thought it was a, just a $10,000 grant. Um, so both of those have been funded through this bill. Uh, we're, I guess, waiting on the president to sign that sometime today. I'm not aware of a particular time. But we don't expect those programs to kind of switch back on until probably next week. Uh, I think there's some tweaking that might need to be done, but sometimes we're the last to know, <laughs> unfortunately. But, but anyway, so those have been funded. Um, right now, it includes $310 billion for the PPP program, and $60 billion of that $310 is going to be allocated to small lenders and community banks, just to make sure that the playing field is a little bit more level than it was. Um, then there's an additional $60 billion for the EIDL program with 10 billion of that being earmarked for the advance. Um, the rest is for hospitals and expanded testing. Um, so those are, we're just kind of waiting on that and, and I'm hoping those will start rolling out a little bit more smoothly next week. Um, I know the banks are still working on the first round of things and SBA is also still working on the first round of those applications. So if you haven't heard anything, it doesn't mean that you're out of the running. So there's just not a good communication or status check um, method at this point. You mean if you haven't heard anything on an application for the first round? Correct. Now, with the PPP, you're going directly through a lender. So your lender should have some information for you. So you could check on those. But as far as the idle, it was a, if you in the beginning with all of the supportive documentation that was required. We hope that everything went through, but SBA was encouraging everyone to go back in and fill out the streamlined, streamlined online application, even if you did the first part, just to make sure. So if you got a confirmation number from both of those, if you did both, then you should be all right. Um, but there's not a great way of checking on that at this point. What we've seen for the advances is that sometimes people will just see money appear in their bank account. No email, no notice. It's like Christmas. <laughs> you know? um, and then usually it's within, we've heard in our network, within 
a day to three days, you'll get a follow-up email that will direct you to a portal and you fill out the rest of that application to, to finish up the loan part of that. One thing people are somewhat confused about, the advance, if you receive an advance, that does not obligate you to take the loan. If you are denied, you do not have to pay it back. Um, and then if you actually do accept the loan that's offered, that again is not going to be something you're going to have to pay back. So it's, it's a true, they are calling it a forgivable loan advance, but it's, it is a grant, essentially. Mm -hmm. So what, what can you use those funds for? Okay, so PPP is the more restrictive of the two. So that is meant exclusively for payroll expenses, rent, now we're talking business rent, business rent and or um, mortgage interest. So principal payment, but the interest on that and utility payments for your business. And that is meant for an eight week period of time following loan closing. So your timeline begins upon the closing of the PPP loan and continues for eight weeks. Now there's a lot of little, little things in there that um, make that a forgivable loan. And if you follow everything you're supposed to and keep your employee limit um, or your full-time equivalent employees at the same level that it was prior to all of this mess, um, you should have the entire loan forgiven if it's used for payroll and mortgage interest and utilities. Now there are some thresholds in there where you can't spend more than 25% of the loan on utilities and rent or mortgage interest. Um, so it's, it's something, we have a calculator that if anybody wants to contact me, um, I've got a couple resources that CPA firms have developed to track those things. My recommendation on the PPP is to open a separate account for those funds. Um, and, and it just makes everything easier to track. And uh, where I expect people to have problems is in that forgiveness portion um, with that particular one and people using it incorrectly. Um, so that's the PPP, it's more restrictive. The idle can be used for working capital. It can also be used for payroll expenses. Um, so it might help you cover those things that are prior to receiving a PPP um, for your payroll, any kind of uh, business obligations that you need to meet. If you've got a, a vehicle lease, something like that, you can use those funds for that. Now that is not forgivable, the loan portion of it. It is um, on a more extended term from SBA, and the interest rate is 3.75% for a for-profit business. Now, nonprofits can also apply, actually, for both of these programs. Um, there are more nonprofits that can probably be eligible for the IDLE than the PPP, um, but but the PPP is 2.75% for nonprofits, but three and three quarters for uh, for-profit businesses. So that's really more of a working capital kind of, kind of loan. You, you're not gonna be as restricted in your use of that fund. Um, but you can have both. You can have both. That was something that was at the beginning, everything is subject to change, so I'm going to qualify everything I say today <laughs> as being subject to change. I think we're a little more stable right now in our knowledge of these programs, but um, yes, you can have both. Uh, you just, you need to use them for different purposes and be able to kind of show where everything went. So honestly, if I receive a, a PPP, um, I would probably put that in a separate account. And if I receive an idle loan, I would probably put that in yet a different account just to keep track. What's um, the um, what's the time payback on the idle loan? Yeah, idle is up to 30 years. Um, that'll be determined by the loan officer that you work with, um, with SBA. Um, it is up to, it's not an automatic 30 years. I think they'll, they'll determine based on your gross, um, your 
typically you're putting in your gross revenues um, for the period of time between February 2019 and January 31, 2020 is the 12 month period they were asking for the revenue numbers and then your cost of goods sold during that time. So that's really the only financial question that was on that application once they streamlined it. And so I'm guessing they're using those, those numbers to determine what your need might be. Um, there's not a lot of negotiation as we understand with that one. It's pretty much here's what we offer and do you want it? <laughs> but we haven't seen a lot of, um, I, I honestly, and in our state network, have not seen a lot of actual uh, idle loans yet. Um, that's the slower moving animal in this state right now. And I think it's just simply because of the onslaught of, of applications. But, um, and then the PPP is a two year term loan at 1% interest. Now, on both of those programs, the idle, you do not have to start payments back on those loans for 12 months. So that's a good thing. So it's deferred. So the, idle, the idle is a loan. It is a loan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a grant component. So that advance based on the number of employees is a grant. Um, and then there is a loan component with the idle as well. So keep in mind, idle is just directly through SBA. Um, then the PPP, you go to your lender. Okay. So, so Jenny, what's your big concern about these two programs with small businesses? Because I think I we talked know. about that the other day. Yeah, I think some of it is just that it's not enough. It's well, not yeah. It hasn't come through fast enough. Um, my other concern is documentation. I don't know that there's as, as much documentation for idle as there is required for PPP, and it's strictly because of the forgiveness component for the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, that's where I'm most concerned that people are able to utilize those funds appropriately and receive the actual forgiveness. For that and record keeping is going to be key and I think your lender is going to be a good guide for what they are going to require because this is not going to be you go to SBA and they forgive it the lender has to fill out this or complete help you complete those those documents so they haven't give they haven't given any um, guidelines as to what documentation you have to have or submit yet there are, I mean, I think we can surmise that any kind of payroll records that you have for that eight week period, um, and those could include, and the unique component of this is that self-employed and independent contractors can apply for that as well. So you might use, that's where I think the tracking is going to come into play, where you can show that you paid yourself for those eight weeks if you're self-employed or an independent contractor. So that would simply mean that you can show a transaction from the account where the funds are held to your business, your other business account to show that very nicely and cleanly. Um, Documentation is just going to be key in my mind because what I'm afraid of is that somebody will be a little sloppy in the way they're tracking these and don't, don't properly track these things and um, they'll end up with a loan that they didn't anticipate. And we heard from one lender that their average loan was 60,000. And so you break that down to a two-year term at 1% and it's over $2,500 a month. Mm. That's, that's not something you wanna have to deal with as you're coming out of this. So we want, our goal is to help everybody figure out their record keeping situation so they can have these be truly what they're meant to be, which is forgivable loans to help keep people employed. Mm -hmm. um, one question that we had was, um, if you use it for payroll, do you have to rehire the same people? Or can you? Um, no, no not, not, not from what we're understanding. I think it's more, it's based on keeping your salary levels at generally the same rate, and I think we've we've understood that to be if it goes below the seventy five percent of your former wage rate, that you might have some uh, reduction in the forgiveness amount. 
um, finding that some people are have laid off employees and due to that $600 additional weekly payment that was put in through the CARES Act for unemployment, which is great for those who've lost their jobs. And in some cases, they're finding that they're able to make more weekly. And so those benefits don't exhaust until June, uh, July 31st of this year. And so we may find that we're having difficulty bringing employees back. Um, so that's another concern, but if, if you keep the same general level of full-time equivalent, which is 30 hours a week based on federal standards, um, you keep that same FTE as you had before, then you should be all right. It doesn't have to be the same people, but the salaries do need to remain mm -hmm. similar and the number of employees needs to remain similar. Okay. What, um, I had a question here about if you haven't heard, if you've applied and you haven't heard anything, is there any way to check? No, not right now. There was briefly kind of a, a portal and I can get you some of these links um, after this. And, and we can email those out to everybody. Yeah, um, there was something, we had limited success reported with um, logging back in. And this was only if you applied that first horrific week with you know, the requirement to upload a ton of documents and all of this kind of thing. Um, you got a lot, you created a user name and a login. And so purportedly you could go back in and maybe get a status. Now, the only other thing might be to use the um, customer service number for SBA. Um, but again, we've heard that people wait a while to, to actually speak with someone and all they can tell you is that it's in a review. So until I hear differently, I think we're, we're almost better off just kind of waiting and seeing. Now I'm happy we have a daily call with our SBA district office here in Tennessee. And so any questions I, I get that I don't know, I can pass on to that district office and they'll do, do their best to find something out for us. And they are hoping to get a review um, ability so that if they're sent a confirmation number, that they can at least go in and see, see where it is at the district level. Now, we won't have that ability at all, but the district office may. So open some of those things can, can come about next week. So putting aside these two programs, what else is out there for small business owners that are, you know, desperate for funding and couldn't get into yeah. the PPP or the IDLE? Yeah, these are, um, there are, well, so for those who are self-employed and absolutely cannot work or independent contractors, you can file for unemployment. That's a unique situation under this um, COVID-19 uh, situation. That was something that was added to the program. So. Uh, that's at jobs, numeral four, tn.org. Um, that has been overwhelmed, as you can imagine. So that is not going to be immediate funding. Um, that is if you absolutely cannot work um, and, and need to have some sort of relief. Um, so that's, that's been out there. There are occasionally some other um, independent grants. So I know that U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation had a grant opening for a $5,000 grant earlier this week um, that was exhausted pretty quickly. Minutes. Uh, it never even yes. opened. <laughs> it, never, it never opened. It, yeah. At three o'clock it crashed and that was the end. Oh, that's, that's terrible. Um, but it just shows you the demand. Um, I saw one today that I posted on our, our uh, Facebook page um, that was shared by my state counterpart, and it's um, unique. It's through Salesforce, and there's a grant available for those with, I think, between two and two and twenty employees, if I remember correctly. Um, so those kinds of things. There's something through HelloAlice.com. Uh, that's kind of a network of of. Verizon's one of them, a couple other um, 
organizations have kind of pulled together to provide some resources for businesses. Um, and then, so I think we'll see some independent organizations offering some relief programs, but right now we don't have a lot of additional options out there. One thing that SBA is doing, so if you have an existing SBA loan that's a 7A loan, a 504 or a micro loan, SBA is actually paying the principal interest and fees for six months on those existing loans. And then something that's new too is um, they are also covering those same things for that same period of time for any new 7A, 504, or micro loan, SBA guaranteed loans. Um, I'm afraid that we're, what we find with those is that everybody is so busy processing these other things that it would be difficult for you to actually apply for those. But we have had some clients who have really not been as affected by this situation and are interested in looking at new equipment or you know, acquiring property, things like that. So those loans are good products for those. Um, there's also a bridge loan, an express bridge loan for up to 25,000. That's another SBA product. Uh, you have to have an existing relationship with a lender to apply for that, um, but that's an option. That's, that could be used for working capital, help you get through this process. Uh, interest rates on that is prime plus, a max of prime plus four and a half percent and up to seven year term. Uh, but that's a loan product and I want people to be careful about incurring more debt. If they, if they can get through this, you know, I think you're better off coming out of this without more debt obligations. But I'm, I'm conservative in that way. I just don't want people to get underwater. Um, so that's about all I know. The other thing I'm recommending is that before you become in a situation where you, you find yourself where you're late on a payment, you need to, to just, you know, swallow a little bit of pride and call that lender and say, look, I'm having this kind of difficulty. Can you offer a deferment? Is there another term that we can work out? That holds true with the landlord as well. Talk to them before you just kind of don't pay your rent for this month. Um, make sure you're having a dialogue with these people because they understand that things are going on and there might be ways to work things out um, before you take a hit on your credit. So we just don't want you to come out of this too damaged. Everybody's, you know, this was unexpected. Nobody expected this kind of thing, but this also reinforces the fact that you need to be thinking about the health of your business from this point forward and having those cash reserves. And you know, if you're a week to week kind of situation, maybe that's something that we, as we move forward, can work with you to help, help address those issues. Like why are we finding ourselves in this, in the whole situation, you know? I want to um, remind everybody that um, the services of the Small Business Development Center are free. Um, they're confidential and um, it's a great resource for businesses in our community that might not know that it's there and that it's available for them to use and there's no charge to the business. Yeah, that's one of those things where um, free actually means free. <laughs> <laughs> no catch. Um, the only payment, if you will, that we ask is um, we collect data. So we're going we're gonna to ask you about your number of jobs, how many jobs are you creating, how many are you supporting, what are your annual revenues, um, you know, so we're, we're nosy in those regards, but it's only because we're, that's how we can help you, we have to know, and that's the other part of the confidentiality, so you can be sure that we aren't going to go to your competitor and tell them all about your business. Yeah. What, do you, awesome what do you see your office um, offering in the future for kind of you know, we've talked a lot here at the Chamber about, you know, what's recovery going to look like, not only for our organization, but for Cleveland and Bradley County. But, mm -hmm. you know, taking it down a level, what's it going to look like for the Small Business Development Center? Yeah, so um, we, as part of the CARES Act, um, the, the nationwide SBDC organization has received an appropriation amount which will funnel down into our state and then funnel down into each of the centers. 
those we don't have a lot of guidance on what that looks like yet or how much that will be i anticipate that we'll probably bring on some additional personnel temporarily uh, i think the the timeline for our funds is right now it's march of 2021 is what we'll have additional funds for um, that could be extended through the end of the federal fiscal year next year so that would be september but we'll probably bring on some additional personnel to help with counseling and paperwork. Um, and I believe that we'll be looking at hiring some specialized services that we can actually pay. We can pay for those services for our clients to utilize. So I am hoping, don't hold me to, to this too much because we haven't worked out the details, but I'm hoping that we may be able to help you work with a web developer to get your business um, website more efficient, better SEO, you know, functioning more efficiently. Um, maybe you need to switch more to an e-commerce type of um, uh, format or business model. We may be able to help you hire the personnel to help you do that. Maybe you need to rebrand. So maybe a graphic designer would be in the works. Um, bookkeepers, we may be able to help you hire those and pay for those services. But um, and I don't want to promise too much, but we're, we're definitely going to be adding personnel to hold, um, to be able to handle what we feel like will be a recovery effort that will need to be pretty strong. So um, kind of how can people get in contact with you? generally mm -hmm. yeah typically <laughs> <laughs> typically we have um, this it's usually open <laughs> yeah we're we we maintain office hours monday through friday between 8 and 4 30 normally um right now we are all working remotely cleveland state is not open to the public at this time and so really it's got to be um the best way honestly is to go online to our tsbdc.org website and request advising. And that way it creates kind of a ticket system that comes to me so we can take, take everybody in the, in the order in which they, they applied for assistance. Um, there's always the phone. Um, it is being forwarded to my cell phone right now, the office phone, which isn't the, the most efficient or effective <laughs> way of handling things, but um, that phone number is 423-478-6247, 478-6247, um, and so we're, we're trying to handle that, and um, other than that, email um, is, is something that works. We have a, a Facebook page, TSBDC Cleveland Empowers. Um, I encourage you to follow that because most days I put something on there that I hope is useful. Um, links to either articles or information, updates on information with legislation. I feel like I've earned half of a law degree by now, uh, having read so many of these things. <laughs> that and I ought to be a CPA by now too, I think. But <laughs> um, it's just parsing through all these documents because, you know, I know our clients expect us to understand what these, what this, these programs consist of and what the parameters are. Um, and, and they're not, they're not easily understood. <laughs> you aren't used no. to doing this. We are going, we have recorded this session and we will be um, posting it to our YouTube channel, the Chambers YouTube channel. Hopefully, this will be the first, so hopefully mm -hmm. it goes well and we'll be able to do it. Um, and uh, so I'll send everybody a link to that mm -hmm. so that you all can see that after it. Um, does anybody have any other questions? We've just had a couple that popped up in the chat and um, Jenny has answered those questions for everyone. If you have anything else, um, you can email me and I'll pass it along and then she can uh, respond to you. Um, if nobody has anything, Jenny, have anything else you want to add? No, just, um, you know, I think that, that we're going to be looking at an obviously new environment and everybody figures that. Um, and I think what, what I want to make sure that we're focusing on for our clients is how to help them become healthier businesses that could withstand, you know, what we, we certainly don't hope that we're going to have to go through a cycle of shutting down, reopening, that kind of thing. But 
that we want to work with businesses as um, as they as they come out of this to help them look at individual things that they're doing and ways that they might improve. Because sometimes you get in a, a little bit of a tunnel when you're a business owner and you can't see some things that might be obvious to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I anticipate that we'll be working on as we get through the immediate working capital and funding crisis um, and, and help them understand what might be helpful to, to let them weather this as we go through probably another year and a half of well, difficult times. Um, so that's, that's what we're here for. We're not here just for startup businesses. We're here for existing businesses. And in fact, those are kind of more fun. I don't want to say more, more fun, but it's, it's more challenging and you get your, you sink your teeth into the existing business and see what, what you can do to help them improve. So um, that's, you know, we're here for all stages. And even if you think you're exiting the business or looking at a transition plan, um, you're passing it on, you're selling, you're buying a business, we're here for those services as well. Well, thank you, Jenny. We really appreciate your taking the time to talk to everybody. And it was good to see some faces that we haven't seen in a while. And um, look for some other uh, offerings. I think next week we're gonna try to do a session with the unemployment office to kind of answer some of your uh, employer questions on that. Um, we're just setting a time for that next week. So you can look for an email about that next week. So thanks everybody for participating today. Y'all have a great weekend. Thank you. Good luck everyone.